In the serene and affluent Munich suburb of Grunwald, known for its old money, corporate elites, and sports stars, PNR Containers was a seemingly perfect fit. With its modest building blending into a street lined with doctor's offices, insurance agents, and real estate brokers, PNR projected an image of respectability and discretion. However, behind its unassuming facade lay one of Germany's largest financial frauds, deceiving tens of thousands of investors for decades. PNR Containers presented itself as a legitimate business brokering shipping containers that transported goods worldwide. From socks to sofas, these 20 and 40-foot steel boxes are the lifeblood of global trade, making P&R's offering seem both practical and secure. But in reality, the company was far from what it appeared to be. By 2018, P&R claimed to control 1.6 million containers, though in truth, it owned only 600,000. The remaining million were nothing more than fiction, a revelation that would soon devastate investors. Attracting retirees and conservative investors seeking stability, PNR capitalized on its low profile and the promise of steady returns. Insurance broker Manfred Roll, who recommended PNR to clients and invested 50,000 euros of his own money, recalls the company's extreme frugality. They even charged for branded notepads and pens, a quirk Roll interpreted as responsible management. It seemed that PNR was carefully safeguarding investors' money, and payments were consistent, leading many to reinvest. However, cracks began to show in 2017 when payments were delayed. By March 2018, the Ponzi scheme collapsed and PNR filed for insolvency, leaving the company with 3 billion euros in debt. What followed was a long, painful unraveling of the fraud with 54,000 creditors scrambling to recover their lost investments. Investors, mostly from Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, formed online groups to commiserate and even organized carpools to meet with the insolvency administrator. More than 90% of the victims were German, and many were retired. Over a third of them were over the age of 70 when the company folded. P&R's founder, Heinz Roth, kept a low profile, and when the fraud came to light, few in Munich's financial circles had heard of him. The Süddeutsche Zeitung aptly dubbed Roth the Phantom, as people searched for answers. Roth had stepped down from PNR in 2007, but in 2016, as the company's financial troubles deepened, he returned to lead the firm, according to Munich prosecutors. By then, the company had already drastically veered away from legitimate container trading into a full-scale Ponzi scheme. P&R's scheme was deceptively simple. Investors purchased containers for €1,415 each in 2017, and P&R would lease these containers to shipping companies, offering annual returns of 11%. The company also promised to repurchase the containers for 65% of their original value after five years. The total projected return was around 20%, and for years, P&R fulfilled its contracts, luring investors into reinvesting more. But by 2007, PNR began claiming ownership of far more containers than it actually possessed, creating a massive shortfall that it masked by using new investor money to pay old investors. Classic Ponzi behavior. By 2010, the gap between the containers PNR claimed to own and those it actually controlled had swelled to 600,000. And by the time of insolvency in 2018, it had reached 1 million. Despite the scheme's collapse, the lack of lavish lifestyles, no yachts, no private planes, and no extravagant parties, allowed PNR to maintain an air of respectability for years. As lawyer Wolfgang Scherp, who represents hundreds of defrauded investors, put it, this contributed to the perception that we were dealing with thoroughly reliable, staid business people. Nothing aroused suspicion. The fraud was further obscured by the company's use of a Swiss subsidiary to manage its containers. While P&R's headquarters in Grunwald appeared modest and frugal, money flowed between countries, making it easier to hide the discrepancies. The company also had limited supervision, with its audits conducted by a small firm in Regensburg, which has since faced lawsuits from investors. However, recovering meaningful compensation from the auditor has proven difficult, with most plaintiffs unlikely to recoup more than a fraction of their losses. Some investors have directed their frustration at Germany's Federal Financial Supervisory Authority, BaFin, 
criticizing the agency for insufficient oversight. Boffin approved a PNR prospectus just months before the company's insolvency, leading many investors to believe the agency had endorsed the firm's creditworthiness. However, Boffin has maintained that its approval was not a certification of financial stability, a distinction that has angered investors like Martin von Horen, who lost 200,000 euros in the collapse. Von Horen argues that average investors interpret Boffin's sign-off as a guarantee of safety, leading to misplaced trust in PNR. As the legal battles continue, the insolvency administrator Michael Jaffe has been working to recover funds for P&R's creditors. So far, he has distributed 544 million euros to creditors, equating to just 17.5 cents for every euro they are owed. P&R's remaining assets include almost 350,000 containers, and Jaffe hopes to return around 25% of investors' money in total. However, the final payouts will depend on volatile freight rates, which have fluctuated in recent years due to global events such as the COVID-19 pandemic, the war in Ukraine, and tensions in the Middle East. For some investors, the drawn-out insolvency process has proven too much, and they have sold their claims to firms specializing in distressed debt. London-based Fittera Limited, which initially offered 14 cents on the euro, has since increased its offer to as much as 25 cents and is now the largest creditor, holding claims worth hundreds of millions. While Jaffe continues to oversee the remaining container operations, he acknowledges that the insolvency process could last for several more years. With P&R's fleet aging and nearing retirement, the company's remaining assets will soon be liquidated marking the end of one of Germany's most notorious financial frauds. On an average day in Grunwald, it's business as usual at the PNR offices, now managed by the administrator. The staff, unaware of the fraud that took place at the top, continue their work. Many of them were investors in PNR themselves, further blurring the lines between victims and employees. In time, the office will close its doors and Grunwald will return to its tradition of quiet, keeping its darkest secrets hidden behind closed doors. Become a part of the playful parade community. Smash that like button, drop a comment, share with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe. Road to 10,000 subscribers.